Nursery in Tahlequah. And joining me is Eric Clark. And Eric, you're going to tell us about some well-worthy shrubs and trees to plant in our garden. You've got one right here that's just beautiful. That's right, Casey. This is Garden Glow Dogwood. This, this shrub right here was bred out of Minnesota and gets it's pretty zone hardy to four. So um, really the, the key attributes about this shrub right here is that obviously it's gonna put on a bright yellow new growth foliage. That'll then turn to more of a chartreuse green. Okay. And it has a good white flower on it as well. All right. And uh, gets a, it gets about four to five feet tall, so just a little bit bigger than this specimen we're looking at right here. Now, we've had some bad storms here recently, so we've got a little bit of weather damage on those leaves, but they're That's actually right. going to hold up through the heat pretty well. That is correct. That is one of the best things about this plant. It will, the color will hold up through the through the heat. Okay, and what about come winter time? Do the twigs do anything for us? Yes, they do. They'll actually, during fall, they'll go to a, a kind of a green, a deep green, and then they'll transition to what you would think of as a typical typical uh, nice red, crimson red twig during, oh, the, during the winter months. Well, we always love the chartreuse color. You got one right across the way there. What can you tell me about that plant over there? Yeah, that's going to be gold thread spirea. Uh, that's another cold hardy plant for Oklahoma. This will come back year after year. Uh, that specimen over there is about four years old. Um, so it's pretty true to size. Okay. Um, gets a nice, again, chartreuse green color through through the growing season and will uh, actually come out with a pretty insignificant white bloom before the new growth hits, mm -hmm. but um, just another real good plant, good staple plant for everybody I, in Oklahoma. I love that kind of delicate willow-like foliage on it. Yes, the fine t texture of the plant definitely makes well for any landscape. It's great to put around water gardens to soften all those rocks too. Exactly, just as we've done here. So do you have some more chartreuse stuff to show us? We sure do. Let's go take a look. Excellent. Eric, so this is a red bud, it looks like. Yes, Casey. What's the cultivar on this one? Uh, this is Circus canadensis rising sun red bud. Oh, okay. All right. So tell me about it. It's got this chartreuse color foliage, obviously. That... It does. It does. So it's going to have new growth that is yellow in color. Um, that growth will then sort of fade to what you see here. Excuse the damage to the leaves. Um, we did have a hailstorm not too long ago, but it's coming back nice. Yeah, this is not heat damage, This right? is not this... typical of the plant. This was Mother Nature. Um, but yes, the, the plant is sort of a variegated uh, red bud and has really a lot of cool attributes to it. It has your typical springtime red bud blooms mm -hmm. that come out before it leafs, leafs out. And then it's going to do this cool uh, orange yellow color when it has a new growth and then it's going to fade to your to your green in yeah, the summer months. Yeah, I like the, the kind of myriad of colors that it presents on the branch. Yes, this time of year it really does put on a nice show in the landscape. Very nice. So it will hold up in the heat and otherwise perform like a, your typical red bud, but you've got this extra bonus with the foliage. That is correct. And this was bred uh, by Ray Jackson out of Tennessee. Eric, so we've got the opposite color spectrum here. This is an opposite growth habit as well. Yeah, so this is Ruby Falls? Yes, this is Ruby Falls, again, a Circus canadensis. Uh, this is obviously a true weeper. Right. Uh, if you go to a grocery store or you go to a garden center to purchase this plant, really you're going to find that the height of it is just going to depend on what the what the uh, grower had it staked at. So okay. typically about five feet tall. Is, right, is and that's important to know with weepers. It's not going to necessarily keep getting taller. At this point, it's going to start trailing down. Correct. It's going to start trailing down. It's going to get a little bit wider. So this one will get about 10 to 15 feet in width. Okay. All right. So, and, and will the burgundy foliage stay all season or? It'll actually, as you can see, it kind of comes out more glossy. And then as the season, as the summer progresses, you're going to get down to this sort of deeper green foliage that you see at the base of the plant. Okay, well, that's beautiful. And, then, and what about the foliage, or flowers, excuse me? Uh, the flowers are going to be a little bit more purple, a deeper purple than what you would find on a typical red bud. And they'll come out again before the, the, the plant starts to leaf out. But this is a great one for kind of a compact garden area, right? Correct. Great as a specimen in any sort of small space that you might have in your landscape. And I love that you flanked it again with the chartreuse color. We've got an abelia here uh, that's got that chartreuse color to it. Yes, this is Twist of Lime abelia. It's another variegated abelia that we have in our Twist of Abelia series. Uh, there's four, and this, is, this one right here is definitely our most popular. Uh, makes for a great border plant. 
as well as a plant just to hide anything that might be unattractive in your landscape. Okay, so probably up around your foundation and that sort of stuff, it would make a... Exactly. A, hide the front of your house a little bit if you wanted to. Exactly. And it, it does bloom pink, white? It is, it is going to bloom. These will have some white blooms during the summertime, um, sort of sporadic throughout the plant. And these will get rather large. Mm -hmm. These are going to get about five feet tall and five feet wide at their mature height. But they do well with a trim, right? <laughs> they do handle a trim very, very well. All right, another great seller in our Twist of Abelia series is Twist of Orange. Yes. Okay, well, let's go take a look at a couple more. Perfect. So you got one more for us here? We do. Now this one's not planted. Is it hardy here or? Uh, this is actually going to be an annual for Oklahoma. Okay. This is going to be a zone nine plant. So it's a tropical annual plant. Um, it will not survive. You're going to have to buy them each and every year. Oh, shucks. But it's got beautiful foliage on it. I love this new red growth that's coming out on it. Yes, this is called Lime Sizzler and it's a variegated Hamelia. It's going to have this really nice red new growth. Uh, this will eventually turn into a nice near neon orange bloom okay. that the hummingbirds and butterflies are very much attracted oh, to. Oh, that's great. So this is a great plant for around your pool sides or just along your pathways during the summertime. And how big is it going to get for us? Uh, this is going to get about four feet tall and wide. Okay. All right. And it is, you said, hardy to uh, zones nine. So all across Oklahoma, we're going to treat it as an annual. It is going to be as an annual. So just get ready to buy one again next year. Okay. But you said that OSU campus is using it this year. Yes. And in fact, uh, the formal gardens at OSU will be featuring this uh, this year. So. Okay, so our viewers can go take a look there if they want to see what it looks like in full growth this summer. Exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing these shrubs with us. No problem. Thank you. with Eric Clark at Greenleaf Nursery in Tahlequah. And Eric, you've got some interesting shrubs to show us yes, today. Yes, we do, Casey. This is one of our newer hydrangeas that we'll be introducing spring of 2018. And this is gonna be called zebra hydrangea for good reason. It's gonna have a nice black stem here and that's gonna be offset by a nice large white bloom that's gonna put on each spring for us. Wow, it's, you definitely can see how you, you guys are clever with the names. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was bred in Europe and the breeder came up with a name. So um, there's a full, full line that'll be coming all, along behind this as well. So something excited to look forward to. So this hydrangea needs a little bit of shade. Um, can you speak about the size that it'll get? Sure, yeah, this, this hydrangea will get a little bit larger. Um, it's gonna probably get roughly four to five feet tall and wide in the garden. Okay, and so it will stay white with the flowers regardless of your soil type. Correct. Joe, yeah, we have another wonderful hydrangea called Fuchsia Glow. Fuchsia Glow puts on a bright red fuchsia uh, bloom and it's an actual repeat blooming hydrangea. Oh, really? Um, so yes, and it, it actually only gets two feet tall and four feet wide. So it makes a good, you know, lower uh, mounding shrub hydrangea. All right, so if you're in a smaller shade garden, that might be a more ideal plant for you. Yes. So what are some other shrubs that might complement these hydrangeas? Right, so outside of the hydrangea genus, we have a couple other great shrubs um, that'll pair well with them in your garden. Uh, Baby Jim Boxwood is our number one selling item here at Garden Debut and is a by far and away the best uh, boxwood in the industry today. What um, makes it so special? I would love to get into that with you. Um, it, it's going to handle a shear extraordinarily well. It's going to be a little bit more compact than some of your standard species out there like Winter Gym. Um, the plant was actually found off of Winter Gym down at our Texas location in El Campo okay. um, about five to ten years ago and since then has really sort of taken the market by storm and uh, is, is really just a great boxwood for anybody who's wanting to have more of a formal look in their, in their gardens. All right, well now boxwoods don't necessarily bloom, so do you have anything else that would add some flower to these We do, we do have another plant that would pair well with this. It is called Short and Sweet Sweet Spire that we offer here at uh, Garden Debut. And this plant is gonna get about two to four feet tall and wide. It loves water, so it can handle some moist soils. Um, it gets some blooms on it during the summertime that are about two to four inches uh, in length, so a little bit shorter than what you would typically find in a sweet spire. Um, and now, it, a lot of these ideas, they tend to kind of have a little bit of a weeping habit with those flowers. Does this do the same thing? No, this one does not. Actually, okay. this one is going to be more compact um, okay. than what you would usually see in a sweet spire. So the, the blooms are going to stand a little bit more upright. So you'll notice them a little more. <laughs> you will. They'll, they'll get a show off a little bit better than some okay. of the other uh, sweet spires out there on the market. And it's a white flower. White flower. And it has a little bit of a fragrance for you during the summer months. 
Excellent. Well, can we go look at some uh, another shrub maybe that is more appropriate for the sun? Let's do it. Eric, so this barberry is more suited for the sun. Can you tell me about it? Yes, this barberry loves the sun. This is called orange rocket barberry. And its new growth, as you can see, is bright orange and red and it really has a columnar growth habit to it, which makes it a little bit unique from other barberries out there. So gets, how tall? It gets about four to five feet tall okay. um, and about two to three feet wide, given it its columnar shape. Uh, we actually have another barberry uh, called Golden Rocket, if you want something to sort of brighten your landscape a little bit more than what these deeper reds do here. Okay, and putting them together, you'd get quite a color. You really can, you can have some fun out there if you want. Thank you, Eric, for showing us these fantastic plants. It's always such a pleasure to be out here at such a beautiful nursery. Well, thank you, Casey. It's a pleasure having you as always. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.